welcome back to my channel on today's video we're going to be attempting to answer Cape Economics 2011 paper unit 1 paper 2 so let's get right into it question 1 focuses on testing the topic which we have been going through during this series which is the central problem of economics so question 1a part 1 asks us to carefully draw and label a production possibility frontier diagram for 4 marks. So this is what it would look like. Notice I have my y-axis, x-axis, they both labeled, good y, good x. And I have a concave PPF. And you can also give it a title. So you can call this figure 1. And you could put production possibility frontier. That'll get you your four marks. The part two, a part two, is asking us to use this same diagram to explain the concepts of a scarcity three marks, choice for part B three marks, and opportunity cost for part C three marks. So how are we going to show scarcity on this diagram? The key thing is you have to use the diagram. So if you only explain using words like an essay, you will not get the full marks. You have to write about it and explain, and you also have to incorporate the diagram in your explanation. So scarcity, if you remember, is shown by a point such as D. Right, it has to be outside of the boundary. Right, remember all points outside the boundary are unattainable, meaning we can't get those points or get to such a point. Right, because there are some things that we cannot have, and all points outside of the PPF, remember, it shows that there are combinations that we cannot access because we don't have the resources to obtain it. So, once you put that explanation in your diagram, and you sorry in your explanation you link it to a point in your diagram such as D you could give it any letter but make reference to it in the diagram you will get the three marks so for part B when we are looking at choice for choice these are all the attainable points which are on the PPF or inside the PPF so we can call such a point A, another point B, and we can also say a point in here such as C. So when you're writing an exam and they ask you to label, you'll be putting points A, B, and C. So it'll be points that are on the curve, points that are inside. So that will get you three marks there. Right, must explain and then you say points along the PPF such as A, B and points which are inside C. Right? And how that is so is because you can't be in more than one place at the same time. Similarly for this, you can't be at more than one point at the same time. You have to choose. So you can't be at both points A and B and C at the same time. You have to make a choice. You have to choose between all the different combinations that you can get along the curve and all the combinations within as well so this is where choice comes in the opportunity cost you need to mention we have opportunity cost of course because the slope is negative right meaning downward sloping and of course you will define it so it is the sacrifice in the next best alternative for gone and then you will illustrate it All right so in our example if we're looking at points a and b we plot the coordinates for each point so for point a it will be x1 units of good x y1 units of good y for point B, X2 units of good B and Y2 units of good Y. So the way we're going to show the opportunity cost is as we move from getting, let's say, X1 units of good X to 
to get x2 units of good x, notice we're moving from a to b, we have to give up from y1 to y2, not so? So this is the opportunity cost here. So as we get more units of good x, we have to give up y1 to y2 units. So that will answer part C. So for part B, 1B part 1, they're asking to state three assumptions of the PPF. Three of those assumptions are that we're looking at two goods or services, and good Y and good X, or it could be two groups of goods and services. So you might look at public goods and private goods, but it must be two, right? Two goods or services, the resources must be fixed and fixed technology. So once you give those three points, you should get your full marks there. For B part two, they're asking us to use the PPF to distinguish um, different levels of production. So the party is efficient, B inefficient, and C is unattainable, three marks each. So you're going to look at the first point, which is A, efficient. So all our points along the PPF are efficient. So that will be points such as A and B, or if you have any other points labeled along the curve, that will be considered to be efficient because all the resources are fully employed. And when all resources are fully employed, it means that we cannot produce more of one good without taking away resources from the other. So remember when we needed to move from, let's say, point A to point B, meaning we need to get more of good X, we had to give up some Y. So that's how you know when you're at an efficient point. It's impossible to get more of one type of good without giving up from the other. So that is part A. Part B will be inefficient. So points which are inefficient will be points such as C, so anywhere within the boundary, because it is possible to produce more of one good without taking away resources from the production of another good. So if I was to sketch this really quickly and put in the coordinates, you would see we'll have a point such as, we can call here X3, and we can call this Y3. It's possible if you wanted to, let's get more good X. Notice we can get more of good X. This will now become x4. So we can have this increase in good x without me having to give up any y3. Right? Likewise, assuming we were at the same x3, y3, and instead of getting more x, you want to get more y. It's possible for me to get more y to a point such as y3. Sorry, y4 and remain at x3. So you can use either, either way. Either you say you want to get more of good x or more of good y. Right? But you just need to show that it's possible to get more of one type of the good or one good without having to, to give up resources from another good or give up more of another good. And for the part C, unattainable. Again, that will be a point such as D, where the country's resources will not permit us to reach at such a point, even when fully employed, and we can only get to a point D when we have economic growth, and let's say we have a shift in the PPF curve. All right, what shift? To take us to PPF 1, so you could call this one PP, the first one PPF 0 and the other one PPF 1. So we can only reach to a point such as D if we have economic growth. Meaning we have an increase in resources, an increase in technology, and so on. So D, unattainable with the level of resources that we have at PPF 0. That's it for question 1 for 2011, Unit 1, Paper 2. I am Ms. Lushu. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Remember to hit the notification bell so you can get updates as to when I upload other videos such as these.